So welcome back to Everything Marketplaces, where we talk with founders and leaders from some of today's top marketplaces. So this is episode 125, which is really great group chat that we just had with Boris Wirtz, who's a partner at Version 1 Ventures. So Version 1 Ventures is a leading venture fund that's backed marketplaces like Headout, Jobber, Shippo, Patch, and more. So prior to starting Version 1 Ventures, Boris was the CEO of 8Books, which was an early marketplace that was notably acquired by Amazon. So this is a really great chat with Boris, where we got to learn more about his previous marketplace operator experience, now investing in marketplaces at version one, some unique insights, discuss the future of marketplaces with Web3, and also had a really great group Q&A. So I do want to note that we actually lost power for a few minutes during the uh, group chat, but we picked back up the conversation, and you're going to find it a great watch to the end. So Boris, welcome to the uh, group chat. And uh, you've been a uh, highly requested uh, group chat guest for a while now. And uh, I know your partner, uh, you know Angela Tran, has uh, actually been a two-time group chat guest with us here. And uh, you know, I've gotten so much great feedback from uh, from her group chats with the uh, marketplace founders and teams here. You know, so I'm really excited to uh, have you uh, join us here today. And would like to uh, start off by saying, you know, huge thanks for uh, taking the time to uh, do so in advance. Uh, before we jump into all your great, uh, you know, marketplace operator experience at uh, A Books and now investing at uh, version one. I think it might be great if you can start off by sharing a little bit more on your background, though, for those that I don't know you. Yeah, so um, I started a company um, back in 99. So that feels like an eternity ago. Internet 1.0, a um, company called Just Books um, back in Germany. It was a marketplace for used rare out-of-print books. Um, built that for two years. And then in 2001, we sold it to our one of our competitors out of the um, out of Canada, out of North America, uh, called Ape Books. Um, came over uh, as part of the the acquisition to uh, to become CEO of the combined entity and then uh, co-ran that together with one of my my co-founders of Just Books for um, for another five years and totally sold it to Amazon in 2008. Uh, yeah, a books to this date is an independent subsidiary of, of of Amazon and doing fantastically well. Uh, still with the same mission of connecting uh, book buyers and booksellers of of used rare rare out of print books uh, around the world uh, and so after that i um i started um investing first on my my own account um and uh kind of le- learning the trade until um um i decided i wanted to do that full time so raised a, a first fund uh, for version one ventures in 2012 so we we're a little bit more than 10 years into it uh now um two partners angela as you just mentioned and myself, um, generally as VC with a you know focus on um, whole set of areas, marketplace being one of them. Uh, currently investing out of our fourth fund, which is a, a seventy million USD fund. Yeah, say so yeah, pretty incredible uh, backgrounds, you know. So uh, thanks for sharing with us, and uh, a lot we can uh, jump into here on the, on the investing side too. But uh, you know, I guess to go back to uh, a books though, so that was a uh, early you know marketplace. So uh, could you kind of walk us through you know your experience at uh, with, with a books and uh, you know maybe some of the kind of like the uh, the key learnings or uh, insights within you know marketplaces that you've now taken with you to in, uh, investing in them. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to preface it as, as a very different period, right? And uh, you know, one of the challenges we had in the beginning was really getting supply onto the marketplace because all of these booksellers, they didn't really have a digital inventory, right? They sometimes perhaps had a, a, a Word document with some of their most valuable books, right? But it wasn't structured in a database or often they didn't have anything at all, right? And so one of the biggest challenges in the beginning was to really get inventory online, getting supply online which involved for us also even creating a little computer program to inven- kind of to help inventory your, 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 your books, right? So it was a very different um, challenge at the time. Um, and supply in general was less liquid than it is today. So getting unique supply onto the marketplace was incredibly important and really the differentiator for, for, for us. Um, Supply is still where the marketplace starts today, right? But today, um, I think everybody who is participating in marketplaces is much more sophisticated, has um, kind of very quickly will discover different options. So supply is much more liquid than it ever was before. So, Yeah, certainly. So I was actually uh, going to bring it up a little bit later in the conversation, but this is a perfect uh, kind of segue into it, um, which is, you know, to maybe uh, if we can uh, chat through a little bit about how marketplaces have evolved over the years and uh, kind of where we're at with the current state of marketplaces. I think there's like three things I would say um, kind of how marketplaces have evolved. I think the first one is 
you know, perhaps this whole notion of what is more important, supply or demand, right? And I would say it was all about supply in the early innings of the internet, right? Uh, and that was like the differentiating factor. You brought supply to a marketplace, supply that wasn't uh, available before. Think about uh, kind of e-books or just books. You know, before it was this local inventory of books within bookstores around the world. Um, you basically had to go from bookstore to bookstore um, to find a specific book. Suddenly, there were like literally tens of millions of books online uh, that he could access uh, at, at a fingertip. That was a huge differentiator, right? These days, much like because marketplaces are mature, um, you know, think about in the books category, like there's an Amazon, there's an eBay, there's still an A-Books. Um, but, but the same inventory is, is really um, available across many, many different marketplaces. So suddenly having the mindshare of the buyer is much more important. Um, so it has really um, shifted much more from, from a supply focus. And that was the only thing you needed to worry about to very quickly thinking about um, the mindshare of the buyer. Same thing as you know, in more more kind of modern marketplace. Think about the the competition between Lyft and and Uber. The supply is often the roughly the same. Drivers drive for for both of these platforms, um, but now the question is like, which app does the buyer um, kind of a customer open first and and kind of use, uh, and kind of mind share of the buyer has become much more much more important. I think the second thing um, that that we've seen is just a um, kind of evolution of the marketplaces from um, simple product transaction to much more complex services and party product transactions, right? And so obviously the low hanging fruit in the beginning was something that was easy to ship, easy to describe, low in value. Um, and that was where the original marketplaces, you know, eBay and iBooks um, kind of started. Um, as um, kind of people got more comfortable buying on the internet, um, kind of with marketplace transaction, buying directly from somebody that didn't know. Um, all of that has moved to more complex transactions. Um, and, and, and partly through the evolution of managed marketplaces, but the, the, the marketplace took a more active role in managing a marketplace. Yeah. You know, now you would even buy, like, think about open door, um, a house, uh, through, through a marketplace type of of transaction. So um, all of that has like really moved from the simple, easy to describe, easy to ship um, to the much more complex and, uh, and, and and much more high value transaction. And and the last one is, I think marketplaces move along technology waves, right? And technology waves always trigger kind of a new evolution of, or kind of a new um, uh, kind of innovation wave and and new opportunities. And originally it was the internet that that triggered the original marketplaces and kind of laid the foundation. Then came mobile and you know, lots of the services marketplaces uh, like Uber and Lyft, um, they really came with mobile. And now you could argue um, Web3 and crypto is is enabling a completely new set of, of marketplaces. So so, um, so that's what, what, what I would say, kind of the, the three ways how, how to think about uh, the evolution of marketplaces over the last um, two decades. And that's a really great breakdown. So uh, thanks for sharing with us. Uh, yeah, you, your mention of uh, Web3 is good. They could be a link to a whole other kind of conversation on that. So we'll, we'll uh, jump into that here in a little bit. Um, but, you know, so from your uh, really great experience, you know, on the operator side of A-Books, you know, what kind of attracted you to them from the investment kind of, uh, you know, lens? And uh, focusing on them at uh, version one ventures. I mean, one thing is certainly I think, and every investor um, kind of is is more comfortable investing in the things you understand. Right? I think it's the the normal way how you start investing. You now later on, you get more comfortable investing in other things. But I think it was a natural transition to say, hey, listen, I I've, I've ran a marketplace. Let's let's uh, invest in other marketplaces. But I think the second thing is also like marketplaces feel like such a native product of the internet, right? And I think the best investment results in general are always in native products. So things that, uh, and, and products and services that get uniquely enabled by a new technology that what, what wasn't really possible beforehand, right? And so marketplaces are exactly that of 
things that were incredibly inefficient or not possible because the transaction costs were too high, suddenly were possible. So it felt like obviously the personal experience was was one factor, but also just from a looking at what is an attractive business model, what is a real opportunity in the internet, um, marketplaces were on on top of that list. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great point. So, so you know, uh, just uh, before we really get into, I guess, uh, Virgin One Ventures and kind of like, you know, what you look for in uh, marketplaces, can you, can you uh, give us like an overview of uh, Virgin One? Yeah, so so I mentioned before, fourth fund, uh, which is a seventy million dollar fund. We only invest at pre seed and seed, so very early. It's it's mostly a founder bet. Sometimes there might be a little bit of a, a product already there, a little bit of traction, but no, it's it's often be invest before there's there's necessarily product market fit. Uh, so it's really all coming down to to the founders, and we have this simple concept that. Uh, we we look at to evaluate founders. It's like we want to invest in mission driven founders, so founders that uh, care deeply about um, solving a specific problem, um, take kind of a long term view of solving that, right? and and are really mission driven in that way. Um, but that could be a, across different categories. It could be marketplaces. It could be uh, enterprise SaaS. It could be crypto. It could be climate. So we're we're generalist VC. Um, um, but always at the core is like this, this mission driven founder. Yeah. Um, are there any, uh, you know, maybe uh, recent, uh, portfolio companies that are marketplaces, uh, that you could share. I, I know we actually had a few, you know, we had a uh, Varun from a uh, head out and, uh, you know, Vernon from my patch, but, you know, maybe you just share a little bit more about, you know, when you met those founders and kind of how you thought about them and evaluated them from a, you know, from a business or kind of founder side and, uh, invested in them. I think these are actually two, two great, um, um, uh, examples head out, uh, which is a marketplace for travel experiences. And then PATH, which is a marketplace for carbon um, offset, carbon removal projects. Um, um, the um, you know, head out when we met them, um, kind of two two things really stood out. I mean, the first one is um, generally travel experience hadn't really been digitized, so it felt like this whole question of like why now, uh, why why head out felt very easy to answer like if you believe that ultimately um every experience will be di digitized especially in travel right this this was kind of an overlooked area uh where there wasn't a, a lot of digitization and and somebody needed to to uh to organize that um but coming back to the founders you know um one of the, the the best experiences as an investor is you you uh, you sit down with a founder and you spend an hour with him or her. Right? You ask some questions, and Varun came back for every question. He had already thought about it. He had already an answer, and you realize right how he was driven to solve this problem, and he was looking at it from every single angle. Right, and and that was just like uh, su super amazing to see. Um, and we love that 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 passion, that that being in the details, having thought through every single question, and walking away is like, well, you know, kind of there's these founders think about this problem night and day, um, and and they they kind of looking at it from every single angle. Um, switching to Pat, Pat was also in kind of the question of why now. It's actually, we got introduced to Pat in April 2020, so just after COVID hit. Um, and at the time, like nobody really had climate uh, in their mind. It was like obviously many, many other uh, problems in the world. But it was clear to us that you know we we needed to have better better climate solutions. And uh, actually, an API that um, would give you access to um, all of the the, the climate uh, carbon removal, carbon offset projects was was a very smart way of consolidating, aggregating that market. Uh, and again, like um, the founders were just like uh, incredibly deep down into having thought that through. Even though this was a much earlier you know, climate, wasn't as developed as travel experiences, and you know, kind of you had to be much more creative about uh, thinking about what could come um, down the road. Um, but so as you see in the, both of these examples, like ultimately, it, it's really always around for us the founders on the one hand side. How how passionate and deep down and and determined they are to solve this this problem. And then secondly, why now? Like why? What is the big wave that that uh, um, that you can you can bet on? 
No, those are a really great example. So you mentioned that patch being a little bit early and I, I, I feel like this is a, you know, a, a theme that you've uh, been really great at kind of hitting on at a uh, version one ventures, which is, you know, whether it's kind of crypto or, you know, even the uh, Angela mentioned the kind of SaaS enabled marketplace, you know, with, uh, with, I believe a uh, Shippo and, you know, kind of patch, um, it seems like, you know, we hear about it from version one first, and then I uh, hear about it kind of in the mainstream. So, uh, so on, on that note, you know, what are some, uh, I guess, like kind of trends right now or kind of opportunities that you see? Yeah, so so I think there's always two two things where new marketplace opportunities um, emerge, right? The the first one is just a shift in consumer or business trends, right? Think about um, handmade goods, right? That opened up the Etsy opportunity. Um, there were high handmade goods before, but at some stage there was like a much bigger interest. Uh, another great example for that is sneaker marketplaces, right? I mean, like sneakers had been around, but at some stage it became a really big trend, right? Um, and and so um, it it obviously opened up the the opportunities for, for to creating a marketplace around it, right? And so consumer trends and something that becomes more important, more interesting, is 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 one great thing. Um, patch for climate is another one, like um, in, in kind of climate is suddenly becoming more important, more on the business side than the consumer side. But um, I think the second thing is then what do new technologies um, enable? Right? And I mentioned before, mobile really unlocked lots of the services marketplaces and Uber and a Lyft couldn't have been possible without mobile. Um, or at least it was suddenly a, a magical experience and it wouldn't have been beforehand. Right. Um, and, you know, I think right now in terms of technology, I feel like one of the, the most interesting one, um, I mentioned that before is, is kind of web three crypto blockchain of, um, kind of suddenly creating marketplaces that have, uh, an immediate execution, um, on, on the blockchain where, you know, two people can transact and, and uh, buy and sell assets, um, through, through the blockchain with, with kind of an immediate um, settlement of the transaction, uh, and, and nothing that, that needs to happen after it. You know, as far as like when it comes to, uh, you know, defensibility, um, you know, a little bit later stages for marketplaces, you know, you've been in a very unique position, you know, with a books and kind of seeing a lot of, you know, uh, marketplaces kind of, you know, scale up in later stages from investing. So how do you kind of think about it from the earlier stages and kind of even chat through that with founders, you know, that might be at like pre-seed and seed and walking through defensibility, you know, Ultimately, as I said before, I think it always comes down in the long run to mindshare among buyers, right? And um, the buyer choosing you on a repeat basis uh, to transact, right? Supply, it might be unique in the beginning, but as the, the market base becomes more mature, there's more competitors, there's more tools to list directly into, into, different, uh, into different marketplaces. Supply will not stay unique. And it's not in the interest of any supplier to just stay with one marketplace. I mean, obviously they want to sell across all marketplaces, right? And so then it really becomes about buyer mind share, right? And um, you know, you can get that through through brand, right? Um, be the dominant brand. You know, Airbnb obviously, you know, as an example, has has an incredible brand around vacation properties and and uh, you know, just um it kind of um, rentals in, in, in every single, in, in, in every single location, uh, it could be around the breadth and depth of products. Right. So, um, you know, I think this is the, the, the strategy you've seen around Uber, right. Where you see like, you know, you can get everything from obviously transportation to Uber eats. Um, they think about, um, you know, kind of even kind of the ride sharing piece, uh, like a, sorry, um, a scooter piece in there. Uh, so they think about like, how can I become this super app that, um, has the buyer manager for all sorts of needs. Right. And obviously then become the, the, the one-stop shop, um, for, for, uh, for buyers. So it really switches very quickly from supply to demand and, and buyer mind share and really kind of making that, um, making that, um, uh, kind of the, the, the primary focus. Are there any specific kind of, uh, you know, I would say like, you know, requests for marketplaces or maybe even just like personal, you know, areas of interest um, that you, you know, would like to see marketplaces in and get excited about? Yeah, I mean, I, I spend a lot of time in, in crypto and blockchain um, these days. So, so that's definitely something I continuously 
or people, uh, other entrepreneurs kind of are thinking about. Um, I, I don't think I have anything specific. It's always very tough as an entrepreneur, as an investor, sorry, to, to kind of come up with the ideas. Um, I generally have interest areas, um, but I feel like uh, I don't want to be too narrow of kind of describing exactly what I'm looking for, um, especially when you invest at the forefront of, um, of innovation. Uh, it's always surprising how entrepreneurs kind of walk into your office or into your Zoom, right, and show you something that you never even thought was was a problem. And that's that's uh, that's the the most fun thing as an investor. Yeah, certainly. Let's see. Uh, hey, uh, Brandon, you uh, sent me a message. Uh, do you want to jump on here? Sure, I'll jump on. Thanks, Boris, for having this uh, conversation with us. Um, I'm building a rental community for sneakerheads on the blockchain. So thank Airbnb. Uh, for sneakers on chain, I wanted to ask you about Web3, where we see a bunch of Web2 companies going into Web3, choosing their specific chain or protocol, and some chains are, you know, struggling. I'm not sure if you see, if you have a bias for one or the other, or if you've seen any chains or protocols that um, you think will be, will be a winner in the end. And then secondly, really quick, you mentioned technology waves. Um, the big technology wave right now is AI. In every pitch meeting, every every meeting we have, they ask us, "What's your AI angle?" Um, I'm not sure if you have an AI opinion uh, with in regards to marketplaces or something you're really excited about. Yeah, great, great questions. Um, to to the first one, so so I would I would think it in a few ways. Like first of all, I think the the ecosystem that is the most active um, and um, the the, the kind of has the most developer interest is clearly Ethereum, right? And around all the, the, the side chains and kind of roll-ups, et cetera, I think there's there's so much uh, activity, it's it's pretty crazy to see, right? And so my my real conviction is that everything that is highly valuable, right, will be anchored to Ethereum, like financial transactions, collectibles, uh, et cetera, right? Now, Ethereum will not be infinitely scalable, right? And there might be a bunch of transactions that are not that high value, right? And think about, um, you know, Helium is, is one of the, 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 the change that provides is the marketplace for Wi-Fi access, right? And, and you know, obviously all, all these things like is, is not that valuable. You pay out a few cents, a few dollars for Wi-Fi access. Um, they just move to Solana, right? And that might be a good choice in terms of just, um, saying like I, I just need to record very low value transactions i don't need that 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 super you know kind of high brand exclusive brand high trust high highly decentralized environment of ethereum because it costs too much per transaction right um and you know kind of it's it's okay to pay let's say a dollar for recording a two hundred dollar transaction, right? But it's not okay to pay a dollar for recording a, a three dollar transaction, right? And so, so it might well be that there's there's a real opportunity around the low cost, highly scalable, more centralized opportunity, and, and Solana is certainly in a, in a in a good place to do that. In your particular case, I think the question is a little bit: these sneakers are real world assets, right? So. The representation on the blockchain is just um, um, kind of a a a listing that doesn't guarantee that you're going to get the sneaker. Even if you tr close the transaction online, like somebody still has to ship it. Somebody still has to kind of guarantee that actually the sneaker that you just sold online is actually the sneaker uh, that are going to ship you, right? So that that's what I said before. Like the blockchain is mostly powerful when it comes to digital asset, there's no real world assets involved, right? Because if I buy an Ethereum for you, like I get the Ethereum right away in my, 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 uh, my wallet, right? I paid you for it. You got the money. There's no question about if that was a good or a bad Ethereum and, and, or Ethereum as described, it's perfectly described. I got it right. In your case, there's still, you know, kind of trust issues and there's like somebody needs to ship and, and, and execute it. Right. So. It's much tougher to do that. Um, and the value is not the sneaker per se, right? The value of the transaction, but it's it's much more kind of the execution of, of just a, um, a transaction online, right? So 
love the feedback. Thank you. So just to just to remind you, it's it's rental. So the blockchain helps us with um, one incentivizing supply, but the logistics and the trust of, of where the, the physical item is. Um, but and, and we're building on Solana, so that's really cool that you mentioned that. Um, do you have any um, kind of opinions about AI with marketplaces? I think AI is just like <laughs> the, the the hot wave uh, of of the day, and everybody's talking about it. I think in the end, it's gonna just gonna be a tool like many other things, right? Um, like it's it's a little bit in the beginning, uh, like you as as a retailer, you had you did have to have a website, right? And at some stage, you had had to have online marketing, right? And then you had to have a better retention strategy. And now you obviously have to have AI to improve your business and just make it stronger. I don't think there is like a specific AI strategy for most of um, SaaS startups and, and marketplaces besides like out of all the opportunities you have to use technology to create a better business, to create a better customer experience, can AI help you with that or not, right? Um, and sometimes it can, and sometimes it, it it's not on the top 10, 10 things you need to do, right? Um, and especially um, kind of when you think about a marketplace that just starts off, there's many things that are way more important than AI. AI is great when you have a bundle of data right, and you can automate things and you can take lessons out of it, but that's usually at scale, right? Not necessarily uh, in, in, in the beginning. Um, having said all that, I think one of the more interesting ways uh, how AI can can help marketplaces is on the onboarding of supply, right? Um, I think listing that uses, uh, a listing process that uses AI to very quickly create listings, make them more um, kind of like richer in description. I think that that's super interesting um, to kind of power, power your listing strategy. If it's, if, if it's around unique products that somebody needs to, to list. Awesome. Those are great, uh, great questions. So it wouldn't be a February, 2023 without asking about uh, AI. So thanks for uh, jumping in there, Brennan. So we're going to try to squeeze in one last question. Uh, hey, Shirley. Yeah. I uh, see you had a question about, uh, was it networked marketplaces? Want to come on? Yes. Uh, hi, Boris. So version one, um, one of the port codes is angel list, which is like less like a function and more like a journey for a specific kind of ecosystem of products. Um, so I wanted to ask a question about like networked marketplaces in particular that include like an entire user segment. Um, well, first, I'm Shirley, I'm building a social commerce app for collectors that uses uh, of anything, not just sneakers, but creepy dolls and samurai swords. We use AI to cluster collectors together based on the similarities of their collections and um, uh, help them build better collections by collecting in public with the support of their peers. Um, early stages with networked marketplaces, um, how do you see the, like what metrics or what um, about the business or the founders show potential of a networked marketplace? Because often at the early stages, we're trying to prove not necessarily that we're hockey sticking, but that we could hockey stick, that we're at the beginning of a hockey stick, for example. We're not at that point yet. Yeah. And, and so, so three things to that. The first one is maybe invest in Angelus. It was the original product of connecting investors with startups, right? I mean, like everything else was didn't even exist. The recruiting marketplace, the the funds business, uh, et cetera, right? I mean, that that didn't really really help. Uh, it didn't really exist. So we invested in a pure marketplace of connecting startups with investors, right? Um, and that's actually a business that. Didn't work super well for AngelList in the end, right? Um, it was very tough to monetize that. Um, there, there was some some ne negative self selection, etc. Um, but obviously, they continue to think about what are other opportunities in this this, this in, in this generally uh, um space that can we can we can solve. And the next one was like recruiting that they tried to solve for for startups. And then I think what 
is probably the most interesting thing that they did is kind of starting to have funds on their platform, right? So uh, venture capital funds, so everybody could set up their own fund or SPV on AngelList. And you know, when you look at emerging fund managers, everybody's using AngelList for that. And they, they streamlined the process of capital calls and reporting. And it was a really amazing product um, that they, 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 they uh, put out there. And so suddenly, you know, all of these different participants um, are, are increasingly starting to use AngelList for different purposes, finding startups, fun, funding, funding funds, investing in funds, uh, et cetera. And so I think it has like a real great network effect between all these functions, right? But, but that's obviously also like just in nature of this particular industry, right? Where you have cross connection between everyone, like a startup founder can be an investor in a fund, the fund can be an investor in startups. Um, an investor can, can invest in, you know, like myself, I can invest directly in startups, but I can invest also in other funds. Like, so there's just lots of, um, lots of, uh, cross connection between the, the, the different participants in the ecosystem, which helps this whole mission of, of creating a network marketplace for, for Angelus. Awesome. That's a, that's a great question. We actually had a few ask about Angelus in the uh, community uh, in, in advance of this. So glad we got to uh, cover that as the uh, last question here. And yeah, so we're uh, on that note, we're we're out of time here. So I definitely want to, you know, be conscious of that, Boris. And, uh, you know, huge thanks for uh, taking the time to join us here today. This is uh, such a great chat. And, uh, you know, we covered quite a bit here. So we really appreciate, you know, taking the time to do so. Um, you know, one last question that I had for you, though, actually was, uh, you know, if you could go uh, right back to maybe before you even uh, entered the world of marketplaces, you know, what would you uh, tell yourself about them specifically? You know, I, th I think it really comes down to um, both for like the personal journey as well as business opportunities. Jump on a really big wave, identify a really big wave early on and hopefully be right. right? That just makes everything so much easier. Investing building an operating career, et cetera. Um, you know, kind of, I think you, you underestimate, uh, the pull that you get from, from a big wave, um, and everything that you're trying to do suddenly becomes 10 X easier. Right. And so spending some time on, on, um, kind of identifying a problem that is, that is part of a big wave is, is, um, you know, kind of just super crucial. Well, that's a great way to uh, wrap things up here. So, uh, and then last but not least, time for a quick plug. Where can we uh, keep up with you at? Uh, yeah, on, on Twitter, um, at BWERTZ, B-W-E-R-T-Z, um, or just go to our um, website, uh, version1.vc, and there's all of our contact details there, there as well. Awesome. Hopefully we uh, see a updated uh, version of a guide to marketplaces soon. So. It's on our list. It's on our list. Uh, uh, the, the pressure is on, but appreciate uh, everything you do for the marketplace community. Uh, uh, appreciate you inviting me today and uh, great questions. Really enjoyed the chat. Uh, so thanks for having me.